I'm going to take some time showing some stories of men who recognized a woman's worth. <laughs> now, sometimes that was good news, and other times that was bad. But men who recognized a woman's worth. And by the way, you know how sometimes something is precious to one person, but not special to another? When a man has had to pay a price for a woman, he tends to look at her differently, and he tends to treat her differently. The first example is from Genesis 2, verses 18 through 25. The creation story. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. And I'll make him an help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an helpmeet for him. For a man, especially a man of God, any woman who will not do. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Two things. So Adam was naming these animals and then we see Adam asleep. As a man, if you are waiting on the woman the Lord God is going to bring into your life as your wife, Adam was naming animals, and there was a point of view of sleeping. Keep on doing the work of the Lord. Yes, there's some things that you won't be able to accomplish without her. After all, as it is written, whoso finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. So there are certain things that will not be accomplished. Adam was not going to reproduce until he had his wife. So he was still busy doing the work of the Lord. There are times when he rested. So rest in the Lord. Keep on doing the work of the Lord as much as you can. Even if it means that you have a bunch of stuff that you're doing and those things can't get done until the Lord brings her into your life. Do as much as you can. Stay busy doing the work of the Lord. Rest in Him. So he made the woman and brought her to him. She was custom made from the Most High God for Adam. And Adam said, This is now the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. It's interesting. Why would they, why the Lord put this thing about, therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. One of the signs of readiness for a relationship is when both of you are willing to leave certain things behind, to come together as one, and to advance and do the things the Lord has called you to do and to be whom the Lord has called you to be. Now one of the things why Adam would recognize Eve's worth, there was no other woman. Talk about precious. No other woman. Eve was priceless. 
And then he knew. She was the flesh of my flesh and the bone of my bones. Eve, priceless. So even when the devil came, as recorded in Genesis 3, that did not cause a relationship to end. In the strife, the things that to contend with after that, it did not cause the relationship to end. When a man recognizes a woman's worth. Another example, oh boy. In Genesis 29, Jacob had fled from his family because Esau was waiting for their father Isaac to pass away so he could take vengeance and kill Jacob. So he fled, met a family member, Rebecca, or person Rachel, and went back to her father's house, Laban. Laban was his uncle. And picking up verse 14, And Laban said, un said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? Mm -hmm. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. Why were the daughters being brought up when this was a discussion about wages? We also see a synopsis of both women, about Leah being tender-eyed and Rachel being basically a beautiful and foreign figure. What does all this mean? And Jacob loved Rachel. A part of that, there were two women. And him loving Rachel meant he put a higher value, if you will, on Rachel than Leah. Does that mean something was wrong with Leah? No. If, if maybe the roles had been reversed and Esau was the one who fled and he was in Jacob's position, maybe he would have loved Leah instead. So also just because someone doesn't value you for the value that you give yourself or the way the Lord sees you, it doesn't mean that you're worthless. When a man loves a woman, he's going to value her much differently than all others. So he loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. Why would he say seven years? That's a long wait. And he'd work for seven years for her? That's how much she was worth to him, that he was willing to work for seven years. I wonder how much she would have worked for Leah. Well, it seems like none, because he didn't bring up Leah. He loved Rachel, and he was willing to work for seven years. Not only work, but also wait. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than I should give her to another man. Abide with me. So that a deal. Jacob saw Rachel's worth, and she was worth the wait. She was worth waiting and working for seven years. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love that he had to her. Love will make some painful things less painful. Again, he valued her enough. He valued her enough to work and wait for her for seven years. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah his daughter and brought her to him, and he went in unto her. Whoa, whoa. 
When did they make a change? Jacob said, Rachel. He worked and he waited for seven years. He said, give me my wife. It's like they were married before they got married. He said, give me my wife, as in she's already mine. Now the work is complete. I want my wife. But Laban gave him Leah. Would Jacob had, would have worked, would he have worked for seven years for her? And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah, Zilpah his maid, for an handmaid. And it came to pass that in the evening, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this thou hast done unto me? Did I not serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? Not only was Rachel worth working and waiting for, now she's worth fighting for. So it's like, oh, I got Leah, well, I'll just settle. No, he had placed a certain value on Rachel and he was dissatisfied. And Laban said, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Ah, that would have been nice to know. Fulfill her week and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shall serve with me yet seven other years. That's a total of 14 years. Would Jacob see Rachel as someone worth working for 14 years for? Hmm. And Jacob did so. Yes, she was worth it. And fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel his daughter to wife also. And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Bilhah his handmaid to be her maid. And he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven other years. Genesis 14, or Genesis 29, 14 through 30. Jacob loved Rachel to work and wait for her for seven years. And when he was cheated, he was willing to wait for seven days to be able to marry Rachel and then work for another seven years to keep her. A total of 14 years. We can assume that Jacob would have preferred not to have married Leah, to not have made the mistake, if you will. But the mistake was made. And Rachel was worth fighting for, rather than giving up. 14 years. He loved her, so she was worth it. And later on, to show you the difference between Zilpah and Bilhah, who had become concubines, the handmaids, and Leah and Rachel. The Lord instructed Laban, or question Jacob, to leave Laban. Laban had been deceitful in many ways, changed Jacob's wages ten times, did all kind of wicked stuff to him. And the Lord told him to leave. And when he was going to leave, or when he left, he was going to meet Esau. And he was worried that Esau was going to kill him. And in Genesis 33, 1 through, 1 through 3, it reads, And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked. And, behold, Esau came, with him four hundred men. Hmm, scary situation. And he divided the children unto Leah, and unto Rachel, and unto the two handmaids. And he put the handmaids and their children foremost, and Leah and her children after, and Rachel and Joseph hindermost. And he passed over before them, and bowed himself to the ground, seven times until he came near to his brother. So he was worried his brother was going to kill him. So he separated his family. 
Rachel and Joseph at the very back. Then Leah and her um, six sons, along with Dinah. And then the two concubines and their four sons. So if you look at it, and then he went ahead of them. So th he was like a speed bump where if someone's going to get killed, he would get killed first. And if Esau was going to be on a murderous rampage, then he would kill the concubines and their four sons. And if Esau continued, then next in line would be Leah and her seven children, giving Rachel the best possibility of escaping. That shows who was worth more versus who was worth less. So years later, Rachel was worth more to him. In Genesis 37, you see how his 11th born son, Joseph, he was given a coat of many colors, the favor of the father. It'll be evident who's worth more versus who's worth less. And whether a man or a woman, why would you want to be with someone who doesn't see and value your worth? So Jacob, he loved Rachel and was evident in so many ways. Another example of seeing a person's worth and having to pay a price or a man having to pay a price for a woman. In Hosea 1, the Lord told Hosea to go marry a promiscuous woman. He married Gomer. They had children. But then she left. In Hosea 3, verses 1 through 3, then the Lord said unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who look to other gods the love of flagons and love flagons of wine. So I bought her to me for fifteen pieces of silver. Jacob worked for seven years. He was going to pay a price, 15 pieces of silver. And for a homer of barley, and then half a homer of barley. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man. So will I also be for thee. The Lord told him to go get his wife. He went and paid a price for her. Even though she was an adulteress, she was worth what the word of the Lord told him, to pay 15 shekels of silver, along with different, the homer of barley. He paid a price for her. And in business terms, he wanted a return on his investment. He wanted her loyalty. And he was going to give her his. But the Lord gave him an instruction according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel. So his view, Hosea's view of her worth was basically how the Lord loves us. That even when we are unfaithful to him, he is faithful to us. And keep in mind, the Lord thought we were worth so much that he gave his very life for us. Another example of a man who paid a price for a woman and therefore he valued her. In 1 Samuel 17, David had fought Goliath. But before it happened, he asked what would be done for the person who fought Goliath. And the men were saying, 
basically tax free living for the man and his family, and about marrying one of the king's daughters. So based on those things, David had qualified to marry one of Saul's daughters. Now, it was a setup where Saul tried to get David to marry his older daughter, Mirab, but he ended up giving her to someone else. We had another daughter, Michal. And in 1 Samuel 18, verses 20 through 27, And Michal, Saul's daughter, loved David. And they told Saul, and the thing pleased him, and Saul said, I will give him her, that she may be a snare to him. That's not good. And that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Wherefore, Saul said to David, Thou shalt this day be my son-in-law in the one of the twain. And Saul commanded his servants, saying, Commune with David secretly, and say, Behold, the king hath delight in thee, and all his servants love thee. Now therefore, be the king's son-in-law. And Saul's servants spake these words in the ears of David. And David said, Seemeth it to you a light thing to be a king's son-in-law, seeing that I am a poor man and lightly esteemed? And the servants of Saul told him, saying, On this manner spake David. And Saul said, Thus shall ye say to David, The king desireth not any dowry, but an hundred foreskins of the Philistines to be avenged of the king's enemies. How is David going to get the Philistine foreskins? Were they going to convert to Judaism? Were they going to hear the story of him needed a hundred Philistine foreskins to be able to marry the king's daughter and just willingly make that sacrifice say, yeah, go ahead and take our foreskins. Or was he going to have to kill them? It continues. But Saul thought to make David fall by the hands of the Philistines. So David would have to kill a hundred Philistines to marry Michal. Was she worth it to him? Hmm. And when his servants told David these words, it pleased David well to be the king's son-in-law, and the days were not expired. Wherefore, David arose and went, and he and his men, and slew the Philistines, of the Philistines, two hundred men. So it's kind of like how, in a manner of speaking, Jacob went above and beyond, rather than seven, ended up doing fourteen years, to marry Rachel. So David, rather than a hundred Philistine foreskins as requested, he got 200. She was worth it. So he and slew the Philistines 200 men and brought their foreskins and gave them in full tale to the king that he might be the son's, king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him Michal, his daughter, to wife. <laughs> I laughed while I was reading. Um... The thought just came to mind. You know how sometimes you count something and then you're like one or two short? It's occurred to me that Dave may have brought 200 foreskins. Where's that? There was not being a short changing, no short count. He was going to have excess on hand in order to meet the requirement. So he went above and beyond. McCall was worth it. Later on, Saul died. Actually, this is 1 Samuel 18. By 1 Samuel 19, Saul had become indignant towards David, tried to kill him. David fled and ended up leaving Michal behind. Saul gave Michal to another man to be his wife. David went through some hard times and he became king over Hebron while Saul's surviving son, Ishbosheth, ruled over Israel. And in 2 Samuel 3, 
verses 1 through 5 and 12 through 16. It reads, Now there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. And unto David were sons born in Hebron. And his firstborn was Amnon, of uh, Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and his second son, Chiliab, of Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite, or former wife, she was a widow. And a third, Absalom, the son of Machah, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. And the fourth, Adonijah, the son of Haggith. And the fifth, Shephathiah, the son of Abital. And the sixth, Ithraim, by Elga, David's wife. So David had multiple wives multiple children. It would seem as if Faltiel could keep McCall. David had other wives. But the question is, did he pay a price for them like he did with McCall? So these were born to David in Hebron. And Abner sent messengers to David on his behalf, saying, Whose is a land? Saying also, Make thy league with me, and, behold, my hand shall be with thee, to bring about all Israel unto thee. And he said, Well, I'll make a league with thee, but one thing I require of thee, that is, thou shalt not see my face, except thou first bring Michal, Saul's daughter. When thou comest to see my face. Hold up. So David had wives, but he had paid such a price for Michal that he wanted her back. She was worth it. So with all those wives, he still wanted Michal. Can I let the Lord? No matter how many children he has, he wants all his children. None will be lost. And David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Deliver me my wife Michal, which I espoused to me for an hundred foreskins of the Philistines. Translation, I paid a price for her. She was worth it, and she's still worth it. No matter how many I have, I want what's mine. And Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, even from Faltiel, the son of Laish. The Bible doesn't say, but I don't think Faltiel had to kill a hundred Philistines in order to marry Michal. David paid a price. He risked his very life for McCall. Jesus, he gave his life for us. We, part of the bride of Christ. And her husband, Feltiel, went with her along, weeping behind her to Bahurim. How many wives did he have? It didn't matter. That could be his only wife. David already paid a price for her, and he wanted her, despite the wives that he already had. Then said Abner to him, Go, return. And he returned. There was no debating, saying, Hey, um, David had, uh, has other wives. Can I have her? It's like, no. David paid the price. She was worth it. And years later, she was still worth it. David wanted his wife. And again, all this stuff is pointing to Christ because earth relationships are a reflection of our relationship with the Lord. In Matthew 7, 21 through 23, when the Lord said, Depart from me, work of iniquity, I never knew you. It is also like a man knowing his wife, meaning there's intimacy. Not necessarily anything to do with sex, even though the Bible speaks about knowing with sex, but intimacy. 
In Ephesians 5, verse 25, it is written, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. In David's case, he was willing to give himself, risk his life for McCall. So yes, no, no one else could have her. Jacob worked for seven years. No one else could have Rachel. Hosea was willing to go redeem an adulteress with a pledge of faithfulness. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoso believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So I spoke about a woman's worth for you, whether a man or woman, the Lord God thinks you're worth it, and he gave himself up for you. God bless you, and Jesus the Christ is Lord.